and we're ready to start tearing into it. And today, we're gonna do the bars and risers. She's a little tight. Spit on it. You can see one skateboarding to the other warehouse. Do they have beer there? If we had another freaking red light. What's up guys? Welcome back to the vlog. About a couple weeks ago, we got the Lowrider ST. This bike has been amazing. You saw us spray paint it. You guys saw us ride it to Born Free. And a lot of the comments have been, how come you haven't put any of your thrashing parts on it? I really like to ride bikes stock the way they come from the factory for a couple weeks, see how the bike performs, see what I don't like about it, see what I do like about it. And then I start to make the upgrades. So here we are, a couple weeks in, a couple hundred miles in, and we're ready to start tearing into it. And today, we're gonna do the bars and risers. That has to be the number one complaint that I have and Juan has while riding this bike. The problem is, with the stock bars and risers, they're so far away. Uh, someone like myself, five foot nine, I really feel like I'm reaching to it. So after a couple hundred miles, my lower back starts to get sore. I kind of feel like I'm like fighting it with my neck. First things first is we are going to raise the bars, which then as you go up, they come closer to you. We're gonna use the nine and a half inch pullback risers, switch the bars out. These are the stock bars. One thing that feels weird is that they, they have a, a weird sweep up to them that I don't like. When I'm sitting on the bike i'm not stoked on the angle of these bars myself so we're gonna get the bars up here my hands are gonna be a lot more comfortable we're gonna tear into this thing in a little bit we got a big day at the shop we got a lot of moving to do we got a lot of shipping to do so we're gonna get on that for a little bit then we're gonna kind of dive back into this bike we'll give you guys a list in the description of what you need to do this setup let's get into this Earlier I talked about how I didn't like the stock bars on this and I was explaining how I felt like the bend kind of went up and I'm gonna show you guys a comparison. I like to run my bars at the same angle as the fork. So, so if the fork's at that angle, that's just how I like to run my bar. Obviously I'm not at the right height, but you can see that this bar, the bend of it, if I line this stock bar up to it and we get them kind of at the same angle, Look at the difference in bend. Look at how much the stock bar kind of like sweeps up. So when I'm riding, I, I personally feel like the bars are coming up. Even when I'm at the angle of the fork, I feel like the bar's sweeping up. For me, I don't like, it's a preference thing, but I don't like the bend of these bars. Very uncomfortable with the way they sweep up. So again, mid bend bars. They feel more level to me when I have them at the angle of the fork. I like the sweep of these, and uh, we're gonna throw these on the bike. All right, so I told you guys we had some work to do. I'm on the forklift right now. We're moving pallets around a product. Also trying to uh, restock, make some room. You can see Juan skateboarding to the other warehouse. Oh, I gotta grab that little pallet over there. And uh, we're kind of working and then later today when we get some time, probably around four o'clock, we're gonna stop and keep working on the bike. Hey Juan! What's up dude? I was pushing all these by myself. We were here with the nice little electric one. I thought you were the engineer. What are you doing out sweating, pushing stuff? I have on? my, this is my uh, warehouse hat. I, I swap them out, you know, nice. out of different hats. All right, we got like an hour or two till we work on the ST. Do it. So it's 4.15. Juan and I just completed a full day's worth of work. We were helping the boys in the warehouse reorganize, moving pallets back and forth. We have a couple different units here. You know, we've been growing, so we've been having to try to make do with what we have. So now that we're done, tired, and ready to go home, we're gonna start working on the ST. <laughs> yeah, baby. So Juan, what are we gonna do first? Let's cover that tank. Uh, we'll cover the tank, start wrenching. All right. So we're gonna cover the tank. We might even put a little tape on the fender so that way nothing can scratch it. We wanna cover all the parts that could get scratched. And here are all the parts that are going on. I'm gonna put all of the part numbers in the description that we use. Extended brake line to the longer clutch cable, the Gorilla cables that we used for the electronics to be extended. We're gonna be rocking, I think, the brown set of our new thrashing grips that are dropping 
this month. We need some brake fluid. We need new bushings. The stock bushings are whack. We don't like the studs. We're gonna use these bolts. 9.5 pullback risers. The reason I'm doing the 9.5 is because, again, after riding it now for a couple hundred miles, my lower back was sore. I felt like the bike was too long and that I was leaning to it. Let's get a little before and after. I'm gonna sit on the bike. Juan's gonna hold the camera. So when I was sitting on the bike, when I'm riding, this is my comfortable position. After a 50 to 100 mile ride, I feel like right here I'm leaning forward. See, because if I, if I try to sit up where I wanna be, my arms are too extended. I'm having to like fight and reach the grips. And I wanna be here. I wanna be like this. I wanna be with my back up, so I'm not doing this. And I wanna be in this position. You know, without even taking measurements, I can already tell that we need to be another six inches up from here. So we'll do a couple quick measurements also just to kind of see where that puts me. But I have a really good idea that the nine and a half inch pullback risers are gonna bring us up enough and the mid bend bars are gonna have a better bend and angle than these that I prefer. I think I'm gonna be sitting somewhere in this position after this change and it's gonna be freaking awesome. Let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna take a quick measurement. Give me a measurement roughly from the tree to the handlebar. What, what is that one? It's about eight inches. So eight inches there, measure the risers. Let's see, let's see what the risers are. So from the bottom to where the bar clamps to the center of the bar, we're like four and three quarter. All right, so four and three quarter riser right here. We're gonna go to a nine and a half. How many inches is that? About five. All right, okay. so five inches. So basically we're gonna go five inches higher on this whole setup. So if we hold, I'll, I'll grab a pair of mid bends and hold them where my body would be comfortable. I wouldn't be reaching. So you're right at 10. So the bar is measuring 10 inches away, but it's also back quite a bit if you look from the, from the side. So the nine and a half with the pullback should do the trick. Keep in mind that the riser goes at the angle of the forks. So it's also coming back as it's going up. So he measured 10 inches from the top to the tree. I picked the nine and a half. Then with these mid bends on there, again, I like to sweep with them more. So we're gonna throw these on. Hopefully we can get this done in like an hour or two. It's like 4.30 right now. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think it's gonna be two and a half. All right, we're gonna keep you guys in on the time. It's like 4.30 right now, and I wanna ride this thing to dinner at 6.30. So we're gonna get after it. Let's see if we can get it done. Let's just remove the controls, perch clamps, and the switches and stuff. That, that way we free up some of the space. All right, so I have this extended line. It just meets halfway on the clutch cable, which makes it easier. This cable is about two to three inches longer when I get this one off. All right, so I got the stock clutch cable removed. The new cable is right there. So you can see it is a total of three inches longer. Even though we went up five inches on the risers, there was enough slack to get a little bit more height out of the stock clutch cable. So three inches will be just fine for the five inch rays that we go with. So let's keep on moving. Juan has one clip that's just holding them up from getting the wires out. What the hell are you doing, Juan? It came out faster last time. <laughs> we'll get it. So now I can see all the control throttle by wire and unplug those and we're gonna use the extensions to reach this. So we got all the wires unplugged that go to the handlebars and now we are jacking the bike up, getting tension off of the front wheel so that way we can then rotate the bars and be able to get to the riser studs and nuts a little bit easier. All right, so now the bars are free. Juan's grabbing the tools. We're going to get to those studs to take the risers off. Don't mess it up, Juan. Let's get, we didn't put the little protective wrap on the fender. Let's probably do that first. Or put a towel on it. At least a towel. That dirty thing? Well, you want this or a dent? Pick your poison. So you can see Juan is working from through the fairing, towel on the fender. Ooh, that was close, but it had a little more torque than uh, I thought it had. There you have it. So here's the stalkers. We're gonna need to get that digital gauge, get all the wires out of the handlebar. Now that everything's missing, we're then gonna take off these bushings. Can you grab it? Go for it. Stock bushing. As you can see, the stock bushing has a, just a solid tube going through it. When you compress this, this stock one down, once it maxes out on that metal, that's the max you're gonna get. Good and tight bushings. 
We have these on our site. We'll also have the link in the uh, description. What we like about them is actually that the the flange or the washer part is actually one piece to the center kind of cylinder. And then you'll notice that the rubber is actually taller than the metal part of the cylinder. Compared to this, it's actually the other way around. Also, you can notice that this rubber would, of course, have more play. And then so what we like is that when you smash this down with your bolts and you get it as tight as you can, I can't even do it with my hands, but this polyurethane actually smushes out which increases how tight your bars are gonna be and they're not gonna flex you know, side to side when you're turning. So definitely a bushing change is a must. Doesn't matter how high you're going, this is gonna improve control. She's a little tight. See. I might have to uh, lube her up. Yeah, put some lube. Ah, yeah, yours is smaller. So here we are. We are now pulling the cables out. Of there you go. I have the throttle side switches and the throttle by wire out. This one's a little easier because it's one. Cables are up. Now I just got to take the gauge out of the cluster real quick. Time is it, Juan? Yep. Time is it? It is 5.03. 5.03. 33 minutes in. That was tight, bro. Better than being loose. All right, so I like to spray something on it so that way this grippy rubber doesn't tear when I go to slide it on. I'm just using like a car wax cleaner and it slides in a lot easier. Goes in there nicely. Now let's seal it back up. Gonna go ahead and install these. Don't forget to put some Loctite. You don't want these things rattling now. Don't do the mistake I did and install it on the wrong side. This is the throttle side. So let's start by putting the throttle in. But once you see throttle switches or the throttle plugs, I mean, in this first hole, make sure you get the one that has the start stop hazard because that is the throttle side switches. Put the plugs in and Try to do them simultaneously. It will make your life much easier. All right, so we got the bars all done. We got the wires all through, throttle by wire, both switches. And so what we're gonna do, we are going five up on the risers basically, about the same height handlebar. So I got plus six inch wire harness. This is for the throttle by wire. It's gonna give us six more inches. And this is for both sides of the switches. This also is gonna give us six more inches. No wire splicing, no soldering, just plug and play. Now these wires are all six inches longer. It's gonna make for an easy install. The gauge extender. Right here I have stock one, and then I have the Gorilla cable, and you can see I did the plus six, so this will make it to where our gauge on our thrash and top clamp, and now we have six more inches to this, which will work perfect the fact that we're going five inches taller on the risers. I'm getting excited. Feels so much better already. So we got a couple buddies showing up, maybe in an hour or so, and gonna take this on a little ride through the canyons and break her in and go grab something to eat. It's dinner time, baby. We, hmm. I thought you were gonna come ride with us. I gotta edit. You staying back in editing? Because we got three weeks until Sturgis, and I had doing that shit on the road. That was good. So here we are, almost done. Going in X pattern as you're doing this. Oh, snug enough. I'm gonna wait. We'll tighten down the risers and we'll get going. Freaking stoked on how these are feeling so far. Oh God, we're trying to finish the bike and the two lane life guys come over. They're done with their live and bothering us. Do you have any drinks over here? <laughs> this is a dry building, bro. Well, yeah, yeah. not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't have any beer, so I'm just gonna have a couple White Claws. Nice. <laughs> Juan, you want one? So what, we're, this is gonna get finished and hey, we're gonna wait. go ride? Not too many drinks. Are you guys going to Old Place with us? Yeah. yeah. All right. We're okay. Hey, hey, take it easy. <laughs> take it easy, okay, man? So this is kind of like, we're just missing a couple guys, but this is our Sturgis crew. Yeah, you could say so. All right, before I throw the clutch on, so I know where to position it and all the controls, I'm gonna put the new brown thrashing grip on with just a motorcycle grip glue that I got at the motorcycle shop. I'm running the brown because I like how it kind of flows with these bronze wheels. And I'm also running the brown handlebar bag. Kind of stoked on it. Get a little bit of glue in the grip, kind of go around the whole thing, get a little bit down at the bottom. And then I usually put a little bit on the handlebar, not a ton, and then Get it on and then spin it. 
Spin it enough to where you know the grip glue is kind of getting around where you want it. And then set the grip kind of where you want to set it. And then you're going to let it sit for a little bit. So that way it dries up. You're good to go. Cool part about our grips is they feature the collar that works with the stock housing dialed. Let me get that all buttoned up. Get the clutch on. Juan's working on sealing up the cables. What time are we at, Juan? It's 5.45, that was my guess. 5.52. Oh, close. Come on, baby. We got uh, 30 minutes. Let's speed it up. Let's get it done. All right, so this side's all buttoned up. We put the thrashing billet clamp on, the grip, the clutch is all set. Juan, what have you been working on? Cleaning up the wiring. One of my pet peeves is messy wiring. So uh, we're gonna make sure this thing looks good. Put the sheath on it. It's uh, nice and dialed. Since we're going with our thrashing grip, I'm going with the brown one, and uh, you're gonna need to get a throttle tube. We'll have these on the website. This is a throttle tube for throttle by wire. We're gonna get that put on. Here's a stock brake cable. We're about four or five inches short. So another thing that you need, this is a Harley line. Also need this to be able to get that line to come out of the stock lower line and go up at a 90. Both of these are Harley Davidson parts. Both of them were in stock at the dealership. I was able to leave with them same day. And here I am going for the install with one. Let's get it. All right, so after my least favorite part, Doing a brake bleed, not to mention it's ABS and a dual disc. We have now gone an hour over. <laughs> I told what you. I said, it's 7.20 right now. I told you. But I'm a little tired after a long day at work and working on the bikes. What do you think, Old Place or Rib, rib Ranch? Rib Ranch, Rib sure. Ranch is fine. Yeah, let's do they have beer there? Yes. Hell yeah. All right, well let's go there. <laughs> All righty, let's get some Rib Ranch, baby. Pull this thing off the lift, see how we feel? And go rip it. All right, note to self, never be in a rush when doing any major installs on a bike, like bars and risers, exhaust, anything that, you know, you never know what kind of shit you're gonna run into. And bleeding the brakes took a little longer than we thought. Almost done, homie, let's go eat, I'm hungry. Let's fucking roll, Juan. Let's go, dude, I'm starving. There you have it. I've been at the shop since about 7.30, 8 o'clock, and it is now 8 o'clock, so. All right, let's get this ride on and go grab some dinner. bit your arm off did you not see that i didn't see it but the problem was i couldn't get it on camera oh my lunch. gosh dude i thought he was gonna bite you like a hundred percent open mouth was this far away from your arm just rough there was a dog that basically jumped out of a car window when we were splitting lanes oh. Oh. that dog almost bit you Juan, well, check this out hey come here look at this who did not who did that that was you, bro. 
You it's been coming. a long day, man. Yeah. I didn't tighten that, so I lost. This is it. loose. <laughs> this is the second time you lost one of these bolts. <laughs> yeah. ah. Oh my gosh. Well, we made it. Get some food. I'm super stoked with the setup. It brown, looks way better. Yeah, brown grips, the bag. I told you, and you're like two, two and a half max. I was like, if if we've done it before, the next one we'll do 100 percent two two and a half hours. But the first one, Four bleeding the brakes, later. like there's just so many unknowns. It's it's hard to like. Look at the old folks. You guys, are your little night lights and your readers. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta see, man. I've never eaten here, so I'm trying to check it out. Oh, what do you shit. recommend, dude? I like a tri-tip sandwich. Tri-tip sandwich. Fuck, none of these guys can make up their damn mind. It's getting darker and darker, bro. Well, we got here at dark time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, boys. Jess, we finally got you in the... So what are you eating here? Potato skins. I got a Coors Light, a little corn muffin. But the real question is, how excited are you for Sturgis? Yeah. Juan? I don't know. Oh, boy. Lance? Three weeks, man. Sturgis. We're getting ready. Juan, are you ready yet? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited, but I'll be more excited if I get a road thing. So I've been trying to get Juan to buy a road glide for this trip. Well, we all kind of have been because it's nice when you're all on the same gas stops and you're kind of running the same gas size tank and MPGs and makes it a little bit easier. And honestly, the ride on a, on a road glide is way more comfortable than a dyno. I'll tell you that. I've done it on both and road glide is way better. What do you mean? He was all hunched up like this last year. Well, he had the wobble going too. He had yeah. the wobbles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sheesh. Like Tri-tip sandwich. Like straight up vinegar, Dip the fries in um, ranch. I'll take a little of that if you want. Bomb. You get one. Pulled pork sandwich with uh, mashed potatoes and barbecue beans. Um, just over here with the tri-tip potato. potato. Hold on. The old guy's got some uh, a chicken breast with some broccoli. Yeah, we're fit. staying lean and mean. Get fit for Sturgis. Boring. <laughs> so last year we stayed in the house in like proper Sturgis, maybe like two miles out of town, but you could walk the main street if you wanted to. And then this year we're gonna actually stay in a house in Deadwood. Deadwood's pretty rad, a lot of history. These dudes are actually telling a story about the history right now on their vlog. We're less than 30 days out. I'm kind of building this ST to see if I like it enough to ride it the 500 miles a day to get there. Otherwise, if I feel like it's not really that road trip ready, I might still ride my road glide. Oh God, oh, here we go. Two laners, look at you guys. You know what I remember? God, getting yeah. the shot, huh? Does that mean? Who got the better shot? Well, the lighting is just so nice, you know, so you got to capture that moment. You may never use it, but you have it. Hey. So, That's pretty good right there. Pretty good. Got a little sparkle with the light. <laughs> wow. Night vision. So we vlog this trip to Sturgis. Are we gonna do uh, intros and outros like Tulane did at every place? Oh. You remember going to the little tripod? <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey. Homie is ripping he on Tulane. Hey. On you guys. Juan. This is worse than switching my right. bike on. Juan's gonna be standing in front of that tripod going, hi, I'm Juan, I'm on the trip. <laughs> That's what I'm asking, well, are yeah. we doing that or? Just uh, wait till all the, the this, fame goes to his this, head. This is how we're gonna do it. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. You saw basically a full day at Thrashing. I rode the bike in, we got it on the lift. Juan and I and the whole team <laughs> moved the warehouses around. Then we spent way too long working on the ST and we even then still forgot to tighten certain bolts on it. We did make it to dinner. Good time. Hope this video helps you guys out if you guys are looking to do a handlebar install. Thanks for tuning in. See you on the next one. Peace.